Millions of people have suddenly disappeared. Maybe you even know some of them. A loved one, like a husband, a wife, a friend, or your little child. And if so, you've been desperately searching for where they could have gone, and you just can't find them. And I know you're scared, and you probably fear that you too may just as suddenly disappear as they have. You have lots of questions, I'm sure. And I can answer many of those questions, and I will. But first, I want to assure you that the people are gone are alive, and they are safe, and you don't have to worry about them. Well, how can I know this? Because I am one of them. You see, why this great disappearance took you by surprise, many of us who left knew beforehand that it was coming, and because we knew, we left behind this message for you to help answer your questions and prepare you for what's coming up ahead. You want to know where we've gone, where everybody's disappeared to. Okay, we're in heaven. Now, don't give up on me here just because you doubt that heaven's real. I can prove that heaven's a real place. If you've ever felt unsatisfied with life and long for more, yet just could not fulfill that longing, then you know that people are meant to live better, to be in a better place. And God has made that better place for you and me to live. It's to live with God forever in his home called heaven. So there's a God. Yes, even if you're the biggest skeptic, deep down you must know there truly is a God. The disappearances, they're evidence. And God does have a son named Jesus who first came to earth as a man some 2,000 years ago. And God has left us a message so that we can know who he is. It's called the Bible. In it, God tells us that he made us, that he loves us, and that he's got everything under control. It is our message of hope, and it is your message of hope as well. Why did God take us to heaven now instead of waiting for us to die? Because God made a promise. You see, when Jesus first came, he was on a mission to create a way for all people to be able to live with God forever. He made that way by sacrificing his perfect life for our imperfect lives. He died on the cross for us and then beat death by coming back to life. Then God made a promise that one day he'd send his son Jesus back to rescue everyone who accepted the sacrifice that Jesus made. Those now missing were taken to heaven by Jesus in an event called the rapture. Through this change of location, our bodies were also changed. They became eternal, disease-free, perfect. Jesus even threw a great party for us once we got there. God's fulfilled his promise, and now we're home. You're probably wondering why you're left behind. After all, you're a good person, right? I'm sure you've done a lot of good things, or at least not much harm. You may have even been devout in some religion or call yourself a Christian, as many who are left behind do. With all these good works, you're probably thinking you should have gone to heaven too, right? Well, no matter how much good we do, it's just not good enough to get us into heaven. The do's and don'ts of religion just don't cut it. God expects us to be as perfect as He is to get in, and no one's that perfect. I'm sorry that you didn't accept Jesus' salvation in time to be included in the rapture. If it's that none of us who were taken got you this message in time, I deeply apologize. But I can promise you that while it's already too late for you to have been taken with us, it's not too late for you to accept Jesus as your Savior. You're asking why all this is happening. The answer is all about God's love. God loves each of us, but God also loves justice. Justice and love go hand in hand. We're the same. If someone hurts us, don't we want justice? Shouldn't people pay for their crimes? 
Well, people have been rebelling against God since the beginning of history. Rebellion against God is a crime. It's called sin. And these next terrible years are going to be God's justice against the world for its continued rebellion against Him. So what comes up next? The Bible actually tells us, I wish it was good news. The next seven or so years are going to be very difficult, actually the worst in human history. The Bible even calls this time period you now live in the tribulation, but it does have a happy ending. So please don't lose hope while I explain what's coming next. With war in the Middle East and all the chaos in the world, people will call out for a global government and leader to restore order and peace. The man who becomes world leader will promise peace by forming a one world religion, but he and his prophet will instead start an all out nuclear war. The Bible reports that a quarter of the world's population, almost two billion people, will die from this war. He will subdue his enemies and make a peace treaty with Israel. When that treaty is signed, you'll know the tribulation will last seven more years. It makes me so sad to say that the world war will result in terrible famine, disease, and mass death. Violence, sickness, and starvation will be your way of life over the seven years. The Bible also warns, and you'll see, devastating earthquakes, meteor impacts, solar flares, and poison oceans. Those will destroy most of what's left of the earth. I have to warn you about this world leader whom the Bible calls Antichrist. Halfway into the tribulation, he would declare himself to be God in the newly built Jewish temple and demand everybody worship him. To prove your loyalty, the world leader will ask you to have his name marked on your forehead or right hand. In reality, by choosing loyalty to him, you choose loyalty to his master, Satan. By refusing his mark, he'll punish you by cutting off your ability to buy anything and even sentence you to death. But the Bible promises that everybody who takes the leader's mark will lose any chance of Jesus rescuing them. Without Jesus, a person is condemned to God's ultimate justice, hell. Taking his mark is a terrible forever decision and not the choice you want to make. But throughout this awful time, God will give the world a message of hope from two men in Jerusalem to 144,000 believing Jewish people to even an angel from God. They will proclaim Jesus and his salvation across the entire planet. Millions will call out to Jesus to save them, and I pray you'll be one of them. With all these people accepting Jesus' love and deliverance, you would not be alone. So how will it all end? With the battle to end all battles, in an Israeli valley called Armageddon, the conflict will ignite when the Antichrist army fights a rebellion from the Far East. But now is when that happy ending I've mentioned finally happens, as Jesus returns to earth and enters into the battle himself. You've probably seen images of a wee Jesus dying on the cross. Well, not this time. He's coming back as a powerful king with his own army. And those loved ones taken in the rapture, they're coming back with him as well. It'll be no competition. Jesus will defeat the armies at Armageddon. Jesus will then sentence the world leader and his prophet to hell and banish Satan into a deep pit. Jesus will be victorious and all who continue to rebel against him are justly going to be put to death every last one of them. Only those who have accepted Jesus as Savior will continue to live on from this point. After Jesus' victory, he'll turn the world into a garden paradise, totally erasing the ravages of war and disasters. He'll set up his kingdom on earth just like in heaven, and he'll rule justly with his love from his throne in Jerusalem over those who throughout history have put their trust in him.
If you've lost a loved one in the rapture, you're wondering, will I ever see them again? Well, the short answer to that one is, it all depends on a decision that you must make. Whether you die in this tribulation or not, you must allow God to save your soul. Everybody who turns down Jesus' lifeline of salvation is going to hell. It's the punishment for continued rebellion against God. And hell, it's an awful prison of burning and loneliness. To choose hell is not see your loved ones or anybody else for that matter ever again. But if you believe in Jesus and accept his loving sacrifice, then yes, you'll definitely be reunited with your loved ones. Just because you were left behind doesn't mean that God's abandoned you. God has made you a promise, and you can find it in the Bible in John chapter 3, verse 16. It goes, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Believe in God's Son, Jesus. Grab hold of his promise and pray right now. Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins and be my Savior. Jesus, in turn, will make you a brand new person aside. His Spirit will be your guide in these dark days, and when you die, will deliver you to be with Him forever. Now, you don't have much time left on this earth, so quickly, go get a Bible and begin reading the part called The Gospel According to John. If you want to learn more about what to expect during the Tribulation, go to the end, the book called Revelation, or go on the web at lamblion.com and raptureready.com, and join with others who have also accepted Jesus as Savior, so that you can grow in your knowledge of God and to help each other survive. God does not want you to go it alone. If you've accepted Jesus, we'll be waiting for you at home in heaven.